In this video, we're taking a look at Plasticity 1.4. There have been some big improvements to 1.4, and specifically what we're looking at is going to be dimensions and measure. These are things that have been in the works for a little while, and something, honestly, that is going to take plasticity from a tool that is mainly for Blender users or polygon modelers to something that anybody that is looking for a CAD tool for 3D printing can use. So in this video, we're gonna look at some simple examples as well as this motorcycle triple clamp to get a better understanding of how these tools work and maybe where some of these limitations are. So first things first, let's take a look at an extremely basic example so we can take a look at how this works. Now I'm gonna start by just simply modeling a rectangle and extruding it out in 3D. Now, I didn't dimension anything when I first created the rectangle, even though we do have that ability. But now I want to figure out what size this thing is and maybe make some changes to it. So the first thing that we're going to do is find the measure tool. So I'm going to start typing measure with the F key. Then you can see it's control plus equals. Now, when we use the measure tool, what we're going to be doing is selecting edge references or vertices on these edges. So if I go from this edge to this edge, for example, let's go ahead and just pull this one out. We're gonna do control equals and I'll do a point to point for this side. And then I'll do control equals again and I'll just grab this edge here. Now you can see that we've got three dimensions, length, width, and height. Now there are some cool things that we can do, but first let me explain the basic premise of the measure tool. And that's to add these dimensions on the screen so we get some visual feedback. We can of course use our direct modeling tools like offset or extrude. And these are going to update the dimensions in real time. However, if you're coming from CAD, these are not clickable. This is not something we can directly manipulate. That is the job of the dimension tool. So if I hit the equals key, this is the dimension tool. So I'm gonna select my first reference face. I'm gonna select my second reference face. Then I'm gonna find the dimension tool, which is equals on the keyboard. Once we have this, we can see that a dimension is displayed 92.756. Let's say that I wanted this to be 100 millimeters. I simply type that in and hit enter. Now it has resized this object for me, so it's 100 millimeters. The second thing that we can do with this dimension tool is actually a little bit easier if you're working with primitive shapes. Now, by primitive, I mean you're working with a corner box or a cylinder or a sphere. Now, this was done with a rectangle and extruded, but it's actually in the background, it's the same thing. If we simply just select the entire object and hit equals, it will display all three of those dimensions for us. So we can say 125, tab over to the next one, set it at 50, tab over to the third, and maybe set this at 45, and hit enter. So when you're dealing with primitives that have not been modified yet, then we are able to do this. If I make a modification like fill it a corner, or if I come through and add a hole to it, and I try to use equals, it's not going to work anymore. So this only works until you've modified it. We can hide the measurements, we can hide the object, and let's move on to our second object here. Now the second object has a couple of features that are at different heights. The first thing I wanna know is what is the height from this edge to this edge, or I can simply grab this horizontal one here, drag it out, 15.27 millimeters. Now if I want to define the height of that, I need to select my reference face first, shift select the face I want to move, hit equals and set it to 15 millimeters. So now that I've reset that, the next thing that I want to note is that we can select multiple faces. We're going to select our reference first, any face that we want to move. And then finally, the last face is going to be the reference for our measurement. If I hit equals, you can see the measurement value is 15. If I simply hit enter, it's going to move all faces to that dimension. If I do this again and set it to say 20, it'll move all of them to 20. So again, this is a great option that we have. And the dimensions that we add with the measurement tool, those are going to be updated visually based on any geometry changes. The dimension tool itself will physically update the geometry. But there's a little bit more to this. And let's go ahead and take a look at one more example before we move on to the next one. So I'm just gonna add some simple cylinders here. They're all gonna be different sizes and they're gonna be at different locations on this block. So now I wanna make all of them the same size. Let's say that this is the correct size here. So what I need to do is select the ones that I want to change first and the correct size last, and I'll hit equals. It'll automatically use that last reference as a dimension. And if I wanna change them all, I can simply hit a value like 20 millimeters and change them all. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna move them into the center of the block. 
Now, if we don't remember the size of the block, we can always use our measurement tool. It's at 48.584. So let's say that we want to change that dimension. I'm gonna, again, go over here, say equals, make that 50. So now I know the center of it is 25 millimeters. So I'll select this reference face, shift select this, hit equal and set it at 25 millimeters. Puts it perfectly in the center. And again, remember the first selection is our reference. The second, third, anything up until the last one are going to be things that are going to move. The last one is going to be the reference dimension. So if we want them all to be right in the center, all I need to do is hit enter and say, okay. Now that only accounts for the one direction, but obviously we could use this in any direction by simply getting those references. We're gonna go from this side to this side, hit equals, it's at 100, we're gonna leave it at 100. And then we'll simply put this one at 50. We'll put this one here at 20. Let's go ahead and undo that. And we'll put this last one here at 20 as well. So again, you can go ahead and do the quick direct modeling and come back and refine your designs as needed. Let's go ahead and take a look at a little bit more complex example. Now this is a motorcycle triple clamp. I did not model it for any specific dimensions, but it was modeled in a section and then it was mirrored across the XY plane. So because of that, it presents some interesting problems with these tools. The first thing that I wanna note is we're gonna use control equals and we're gonna measure this edge. It's at 30.6 millimeters right now. I'm gonna select the inside face, hit equals and say that this is supposed to be 30 and hit enter. Now, in some cases, this will work perfectly fine. However, the first time that you resize this because it was created with a mirror, it's not a true cylindrical face. It actually had a split in the edge. And this means that sometimes your dimension reference will end up going to zero. So that's something that you need to pay attention to. If that happens, all you really need to do is go back and delete that and then reapply your measurement by selecting the edge again. Uh, that's the, really the only thing I found with that. The second thing is that the measurement tool on an open cylinder like this is not gonna give us a true diameter value. It's going to only give us the radius. That's not a big deal, but that's something that we should consider. We can't toggle between radius and diameter. It does still allow us to reset the dimension. Let's say it's supposed to be 52 millimeters and it will update that properly. And if we do the same thing over here, we're gonna set it equal 52 and it updates that as well. Now, one of the big things that we are gonna run into or problem when we're dealing with symmetric modeling like this is if we are trying to figure out the distance between these two cylinders, that distance is going to be something that's a little bit trickier for us to manipulate. Right now it's at 214 millimeters, 0.267. And if I try to make that a specific dimension, it's going to move the first selection and keep the sec or it's going to move the second selection relative to the first. So what this means is really you should work in symmetry as long as possible by modeling half of it. And once you're happy with the dimensions, then move over to the other side. If you absolutely have to do something like manipulate this after the fact, you can potentially come and create a plane. So if we extrude this as a reference, and I select this and shift select this hole and say equal, we can set this to 108 millimeters, but keep in mind that that is moving the inside face and it's not taking into account the chamfer. That means that the inside and the outside cylinders are going to be at different distances. So if I select this outside face and, and wanna move that relative, then again, this is gonna be problematic because it's moving them relative to their own geometry. There will be limitations to this. Of course, if you've got a lot of intricate features like chamfers and fillets and things like that, that's gonna complicate the process even more, but it is still possible if we create intermediate reference geometry and we can use that to manipulate the, the locations. I'm gonna do control Z and sort of pull things back in line where it was. Let's go ahead and move that. There we go. So that's a basic overview of how the dimension and measure tools work in Plasticity 1.4. There were some other improvements. I'm not gonna go over all of those in this video because this was honestly the biggest one for me. If you have any questions on this, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.